All right, Shalom, Brother Ara, coming to you with another video. Before I move forward, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone for teaching us the 100% truth according to the Bible and who rule well. And a double Shalom to all you Akim, you Aqua, those that hope for elect, seeking for salvation. Now, the title of this lesson is called The Truth Edifies. Okay? The truth edifies. The truth is the scriptures, man. All right? The word. Now, the word has to be preached by men that the Lord gave the Holy Spirit to to, to preach 100% truth. All right? Who, as the scripture goes into, in fact, I'm going to bring it out. So this word has to be preached um, by an ordained man, Israelite man, that the Lord calls to preach the word. Okay? But when you read Jeremiah 3 and 15, it says, And I will give you pastors... Now, we always mention this and we go into this word pastor. It says it means a spiritual guide. It says, according to mine heart, so the Lord clearly and specifically had it on his mind to set up certain teachers in these times who have the 100 percent truth and who are going to preach to you the 100 percent truth. And we know and believe it to be the apostles and elders of Great Millstone on down and the like minded camps. All right. It says, which shall feed you, all right, and you go into that word feed, you, you know, you can tie it back to minister, which means to serve, all right, serve you, feed you with knowledge and understanding, okay, and that's truly what's going on in these times, and through that, you're going to get edification. If you are receiving this truth uh, and, and um, sincerity, all right, and the Lord has to give you the Holy Spirit to do so, and we know that to be the hopeful elect. OK, but ultimately the truth is going to edify the hopeful elect. And that's what it's doing now. You're seeing that the, the house of David, you know, Lord willing, we part of that number. And I'm speaking specifically of uh, the uh, hopeful elect. You see that the hopeful elect is waxing stronger. And then now you see these uh, false camps, these false prophets, you know, ISUPK, you know, um, IUIC. You know, they're led by men who are false prophets who don't have the 100 percent truth. Who don't call on the true names Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai because you don't have the truth if you're not calling on Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Okay, if you're telling the people that the mark of the beast is the embargo or it, it's uh, spiritual as a so called white woman, you don't have the 100% truth. Therefore, uh, there's no edification that's coming um, from those those camps. All right, and their congregation is not being edified as well. Okay, now when you read 2 Timothy 4 and 2, it says, preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season. All right, preach means to teach. Okay, the Lord wants his men, his men that he ordained to preach the word all year round, you know, in season, out of season. And that's another, you know, uh, example of how the Lord, uh, how a man of the Lord is. Okay, he's going to constantly go out there and edify the hopeful elect. Okay, a lot of these camps. They take off when it's cold, okay, when it's not favorable to be out. But, you know, it's going to be on the spirit of the true prophets the Lord set up, the spiritual guides to guide Israel, even in the times, you know, when it's, you know, 30, 40 degrees. We were out there during the wintertime. Where were you at the camps, right? But it reads on, reprove, meaning to correct. And see, we need correction. The, the thing about the truth is the truth will expose you know, your vulnerabilities, you know, your wickedness that you were doing in the world. It did for all of us when we first came in. Because why? We needed correction. We needed to be reproved. And that's that's why the Lord sent forth his men to, to give us knowledge and understanding. Okay, for correction. It says rebuke. Now, that word rebuke goes into uh, to express, you know, disapproval for one's doings. So when you bring out the truth and it comes out raw, because the truth is raw and uncut. It's going gonna, it's gonna to show um, how the Lord truly feels about how you've been conducting yourself. You know, it says, uh, so So it's going to come out harsh. You know, it's going to come out harsh. And and to a lot of our people get offended by it. But the scriptures say, blessed are those that are not offended in me. It says, uh, exhort, meaning to lift up with all long suffering and doctrine. And that's clearly, um, you know, what... what um, when you bring out the scriptures and you listen to the teachers that preach the word, it comforts you. You know, when you read scriptures like Isaiah 41, um, Psalm 18 chapter, Psalm 91st chapter, and so on and so forth. Because we have help 
if we take heed and obey Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, the Lord is going to give us rewards for those things, man. Okay, verse three: For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Now, the key words I want to focus on is says, but after their own lusts. Okay, so a lot of our people they get emotional, and when it comes to the truth, you got to be more logical. Yeah, we're in the flesh, but you have to be logical. You have to take the truth for what it is. You know, so they get offended when we tell them that salvation is only for Israel. And it's going to start with the elect. We tell them that the covenant of promises, all that is for the nation of Israel. We can prove it. We've proven it many times. We tell them that we are the children of Israel. We tell them what the true names are. Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai. But because of their emotions, they can't receive it. All right. So they tend to... Um, Follow teachers having itch in the ears, you know, telling them lies, telling them things that they want to hear. All right. But they don't get edification from that. And in fact, they decrease because I want to prove that there because um, we mentioned that it says rebuke, uh, reprove, rebuke, rebuke, exhort with all long, with all long suffering. Right. OK. Um, I'm going to bring out this scripture right quick just to prove that. All right, it says, uh, Proverbs 15 and 20 says, Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. All right, correction goes back to reproof. All right, so it says, um, when we just read 2 Timothy 4 and, and uh, 3, I'm going to read the ending part. It says, But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Teachers having telling them smooth things, right? Because when they hear these smooth things, there's no edification. They're decreasing worse. Okay. And they're not getting correction. So correction is grievous unto him that forsake of the way. And he that hateth reproof shall die. So ultimately those of our people who are not taking heed to the truth and not getting edification, they're doing the total opposite. They're decreasing and they're pretty much getting prepared, um, getting ready to meet the maker, you know, getting ready to face death. All right. All right. It says, uh, but after their own lust, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. OK. Verse four. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. So they're going to turn it away. Their ears from the truth, which means they're not going to get any edification. They're going to continue to listen to lies. All right. A lot of these Christians, you know, they are stuck on worshiping Jesus Christ. When we clearly proved in the scriptures that our Lord is a dark skinned man with a white woolly beard. So Jesus Christ could not be that man, you know, and his name is not in Greek. It's in Hebrew. OK, uh, the pure tongue. Now, we proved that again in the scriptures. Many lessons have been done on that. All right. But the, yet they turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned and shall be turned into fables. All right. What are fables? Made up stories, lies, man fairy tales. Okay. So that's what majority of our people believe in. So there's no edification coming from that. All right. And therefore they will eventually be destroyed. I want to bring out this definition here, edification. All right. It says, uh, to edify, it says to instruct or improve someone morally or intellectually. So when the truth comes out, the raw uncut truth comes out. All right. Those who the Lord give the spirit all right, to believe in the truth and take heed to the words are going to be improved morally and intellectually. It says to educate, to instruct. You're going to take heed to the instructions to teach, to enlighten. You're going to be enlightened. OK, it says guide. You're going to be guided. <laughs> I mean, there's so many good synonyms in this definition here. It says to coach. All right. To develop, to cultivate. All right. It says to uplift, to better, to improve, to elevate. Now, there's one word I want to bring out to inform. OK, this word inform I want to bring out it says to give someone facts or information to tell. So we're giving you facts through the power and spirit of how about Shemiah was shy. How can you argue against facts? Two plus two is four. All right. That's a fact. How can you argue against it? OK, now, when when you when you read um, Isaiah see uh eight and twenty and we're gonna end off by prophesying because the scriptures say rather you prophesy right that's part of the truth 
um, Isaiah 8 and 20, it says to the law and to the testimony. All right. Now, when we go into testimony. Um, the testimony is to have the spirit of prophecy. OK, so to the law, and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And that light is your house shot. So there's teachers out there who are telling you smooth things. All right. They're telling you that you can go get punched. You know, if you understand the code words, you can go and take the jab. All right. They're going to downplay the MOB as if it's not a major prophecy. It's a major prophecy. And you need to be informed in that so you can be edified and prepare for the things that's coming forth. So they're going to downplay and say the MOB is a, a you know, so-called white woman is embargo, is spiritual, is sin. It is a type of sin, but the MOB is the RFID chip, all right, which is getting ready to be mandated in order for you to buy or sell. They're going to make it where you're going to have to get the MOB, but the elect is going to be edified and they're going to know the truth and they're not going to take it. So the truth edifies, but if you don't accept the truth, which the Lord has to give you the Holy Spirit to accept it and believe it and to fear him, which to take heed, then you're going to go out there and take the MOB, you know? Um, I'm going to bring out a couple more scriptures and I'm going to close out. But uh, when you read 1 Corinthians um, 15 and 58, <clears throat> it says... No, that's not it. Um, that's not the one I want. Yeah, it's 1 Corinthians 14 and 3. That's it. 1 Corinthians 14 and 3. I'm going to start at 1, though. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, all right? But rather that ye may prophesy. Prophesy means to tell you before, okay? Uh, the, the men the Lord set up all have spiritual gifts. One of the spiritual gifts that they all have in common, we all have in common, Lord willing, you know, we re remain until the end, is faith. All right. But then you have some men who are, um, are stronger and receive more spiritual gifts in knowledge, you know, uh, wisdom. OK, prophesying, you know, speaking in tongues, things of that nature. OK, but the scriptures say, but rather that ye prophesy and prophesy means to tell you before to inform. OK, the things is coming out of pipeline. OK, it says and I'm going to jump down to three. It says, but he that prophesied speak unto speaketh unto men to edification to build you up, to educate you, to inform you, okay, to guide you. It says, and exhort an exhortation and comfort. We lift our people up and we comfort our people because there's help and there's going to be protection for our people, those who believe in the, in the faith, man, those who take heed to the words, the elect. Because you read Psalm 91, Psalm 18, you know, uh, Isaiah 41, uh, Isaiah 14, throughout the scriptures, the Lord goes into those who take heed and believe on him. He's going he's gonna to protect you and guide you in the times that's coming forth. So there's good news to that. But if you don't have edification and you're not built up in the spirit for these times to come forth, you're not going to be prepared. All right. Um, it says, uh, verse four, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth, means to tell you before, edify up the church all right and what are what are some of the prophecies okay we're going to bring out some of the prophecies you know as part of edification okay <clears throat> as uh second Ezra 15 and 49 it says i will send plagues upon thee widowhood okay women without their husbands all right which is a very serious thing because the man is supposed to be the protection head of the household but the Lord is getting ready to destroy a lot of these men and these uh, upcoming civil unrest. The famine is going to hit. All right. Then you're going to have men that are going to be sent off to these war to, to World War Three. OK, the war of Armageddon. OK. And then also a lot of we these women are going to be destroyed. There's no respect to persons. These women are being destroyed now. All right. Two thirds are catching hell now. It says poverty. OK. Homelessness, which is that that's at an all time high skid row. And then you got blocks that are rough in Philly, abandoned homes in Detroit, all over in the Midwest, uh, East Coast, West Coast. Poverty is at an all-time high. Loss of jobs is at an all-time high. Okay. Famine. It says famine, lack of food, a shortage of food, and there's going to be a shortage of water. Okay. 
And that's, again, happening in Central America, South America. Okay, but look, North America is getting ready to get, get, it, uh, get it the hardest, man. Okay, say the best for last. It says a uh, sword, a killer instrument, which represents, you know, one of the swords you think of is Esau, the so-called white man and his military. They're going to come in against the Israelites, mainly those that fear the Lord. But he's coming against the Israelites, man. Okay, it says in pestilence, meaning diseases, to waste thy houses with destruction and death. All right, we're telling you the truth to edify you, to build you up. All right, the Lord didn't give us a spirit of fear, okay, but sound doctrine. Matter of fact, let me get that. So the purpose of us preaching the truth is for edification for our people and exhortation and comfort. So that way, you know, you understand that there's going to be help, but you got to know the names of, of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. You got to be praying and fasting and preparing for these times to come forth. Okay, um, see... Hold on a second, because I mentioned this scripture, I want to bring it out. It says, uh, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, For the Most High, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Okay, of a sound mind. That's the key words. Okay, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. The wisdom and knowledge of scriptures, all right, which is being preached, through the men the Lord set up, preaching 100% truth is going to edify you to be of a sound mind in the times that's coming forth. So, you know, you don't want to run from, you don't, you don't want to run from, um, you know, these prophecies coming forth. They're going to come. All right. We're going to be amongst it. But if you're edified and you're built up in the spirit and you are truly been seeking the Lord and truth and sincerity, the Lord is going to protect you. Uh, second Ezra's 15 and 1 it says behold speak thou in the ears of my people uh the words of prophecy okay the words of prophecy the king james version 16 11 it says which i will put in thy mouth save the lord so the lord is going to send you pastors according to his heart which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding okay so the lord is he's setting this thing up perfectly verse 2 and cause them to be written in paper for they are faithful and true Okay, verse three, fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. Those who don't have faith, you know, um, latching on to teachers uh, uh, of those that are, are preaching lies unto them, you know, talking shit against the men of the Lord. Don't don't worry about that. Okay, the Lord said in the last days, he's going to send forth scoffers, mockers and scoffers. Okay. It says, uh, verse four, for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. So if you're not being edified by the truth, you know, you ultimately are latching on to some type of lie, some type of doctrine. OK, and that's going to ultimately uh, result in your death. You're going to be destroyed. All right. It says, uh, verse five, behold, say the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world. All right. The sword, as we read earlier, famine, death and destruction. You can't make this up, man. So all this is coming down the pipeline and we're preaching to our people edification. And the Lord is making a clear division on who he's dealing with, you know, which is the apostles and elders of Great Millstone on down and the like minded camps that are preaching 100 percent truth. We're not out here trying to uh, knock another camp off their block, man. We're out here trying to edify our people and prepare them what's coming down uh, for what's coming down the pipeline. All right. Last script or two more scriptures. I'm close out. Philippians, um, let's see, Philippians 1 and 8, it says, uh, For the Most High, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, is my record, how greatly I long after you all the bowels of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Verse 9, And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. Abound means to increase abundantly. So we want to increase abundantly in the knowledge. You know, we want to keep being lifted up, all right, and being trained up, you know, um, by continuing to accept and receive the truth. The truth will make you uh, realize, you know, your vulnerabilities and where you were going off at. And by that, you can use that for correction in your life, all of us. Um, it says, verse 10, 
that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Hamashiach, without offense. So you're not going to take offense. Instead, you're going to, ah, oh, like you. Okay, it's still recording. Good. My computer went out. Instead, you're not going to be offended in the truth. You're going to use that for edification. All right, I got to read that again. Philippians 1 and 10, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Hamashiach. All right, last scripture here. Um, 1 Corinthians 15 and I believe 58. It says, therefore, I'm going to start at 57. But thanks be to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Verse 58, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, which means firm, okay, loyal, unwavering, okay, unmovable, always abounding, plentiful, growing in the work. It says, in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So not only are we being edified, all right, through the power and spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, which he has set up the truth and sent for teachers to teach us the truth, we're also, the Lord is, uh, we're storing up treasures in heaven, and Lord is not unrighteous to forget our works and labor of love. So at the end of the day, the truth is edifying us, but then also, too, with so many other benefits that we can't even think of in, uh, in these times, man. All right, and if we are part of the first fruits, we're going to truly experience that, man. You know, if we're part of the elect, I should say, we're going to um, truly experience that when the kingdom comes, man. All right. So with that being said, all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom.